What I'm planning to do over the next uh, few minutes is to give you a, a small sample of what it's like to be in one of my courses. What we're planning to do is to discuss uh, distributed teams. It's a key area that is very much misunderstood in the industry. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, uh, we're going to be talking about distributed teams. Distributed teams are one of the hardest things to understand. And over the next few minutes, I'm gonna, I hope to take you on a journey. The journey is going to begin with explaining what a distributed team is. It's then going to move on to some of the ideas of how to cope with a distributed team. And then we're going to be looking at some of the tips, tricks and traps that can make a great distributed team, but also a team that is going to be set up for disaster. One of the things that I do look for is that normally it's not just one thing that is going to cause a team to fail. Normally it's multiple things. And I've come up with something called the Stu Mitchell clock of disaster. And the clock of disaster looks something like this. If the hands are at 12 o'clock, then everything is great. But as the hands move down towards six o'clock, then we have disaster. So a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about now are not in themselves going to take you from 12 o'clock to six o'clock, but they do push the hands downwards. So let's have a look at it. In the Agile Manifesto, under the values, it says individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And throughout the values and principles, it talks about interactions and how the individuals and trusting the individual and making sure that your team can do the best possible thing. But in order to make sure that your, te your teams can do the best possible thing, you've got to be in an environment that allows them to do the best possible thing. So let's talk about distributed teams. What is a distributed team? Ideally, your team sits together. And in Henrik Nyberg's book, The Scrum and XP from the Trenches, he uses this great phrase. He says, sit together, sit together, sit together. And I really do echo those thoughts. Because if we're sitting together, and as humans, we are very good at reading people's faces, the body language. I can see if Nitesh is tired. I can see if Bob's available. And because I can see that, I can then adjust my actions accordingly. I can also adjust my tones accordingly because the, the, because language can be very, very harsh. And it's well known that I think we've all sent a text message and it's been read the wrong way. So sitting together is a highly powerful tool. It also means that I, we can just slide the chair across and we can do some things like pair programming. We can, we can interact. I can learn from you. I can, we have the osmosis from the team. So let's take it one step away. And that one step away is going to surprise you because a distributed team becomes a distributed team if you've got one of the members working from home. If you've got one of your team member that is greater than eight meters away from the core team, guess what? You've got a distributed team. Eight meters away, I can see them. I can still get, have eye contact. I can still get up off my chair, walk across and say hello, say good morning. And I can even meet them at the water cooler. Is it ideal? Well, no, but I, I, it, the reality is that I have, I'm always going to have a, a certain degree of uh, dispersion amongst my team. Chairs are not always together, space doesn't allow it. But it's a tick. It's a tick downwards. The next is that I've got somebody, one of my team members are in a different floor or in a different building. Now we're looking at a little bit more serious. It means that I can't actually see line of sight. I've got to get up my chair. I've got to go and look for them. I've got to pick up the phone. I've got to send them a ping. I've got to send them an email just to sort of, are you available 15 minutes? Still okay. We can have coffee with them. We can still have lunch together. We may be 
I may need to walk 15, 20 minutes across to another side where the other building is, but what happens is I still get that contact. We're still able to have that fantastic collaboration to get that wonderful feedback. They can still be there for our daily scrum. They can still be there for our sprint review. And they can still be there for our planning sessions. But now it gets a little bit harder. What happens if that building is in a different town? What happens if we've got to schedule that individual through video? Perhaps we've got that individual or that team or the or members of that team are just not available because of their, their environment. Perhaps even harder is that individual is in a different country. So now we've got individuals that are in a different country, perhaps in um, in the UK, in China, in India, and we've got we start introducing additional complexities. We've got a complexity of time. Are they going to be in our time zone? We've got the complexity of language. We've got the complexity of cultural issues coming through. I've actually seen teams that have ended up having uh, two daily scrums, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and with a, with a leg in between to just to make sure that people have got a handover from one to the other. It makes it extraordinarily hard. And even to take it into the worst case scenario that I've seen, where I was working for a, a famous blue chip company, whereby we had some core people in Hong Kong, we had some developers in uh, China, we had some other, other developers in Vancouver, and we had the product owner in London. Wow, it was like a, it was like a three ring circus. It was just so hard to actually coordinate, get everybody together. Does it mean that it's going to be disaster for your project? Do any of these things mean it's disaster for the project? What it does mean is it makes it harder. It means the clock is ticking many times downwards. It means that that great collaboration, if you remember the principles or where we talk about enable face-to-face -face interactions, communications are done best when the team are together. The product is best built when the, the teams are co-located. Reality means that we have to accept that due to budgets, due to uh, space, due to people just wanting to work from home or in a different location, that today's projects, today's modern projects are distributed. So what can we do about it? Knowing that it's not ideal, knowing it's not going to be built for the, the ultimate conclusion of actually a great product, what can we do? So let's have a look at some of the tips, tricks, and traps that we can, uh, we can work with. Well, working from home is an inevitability. People want to work from home. They want to be there when the plumber comes out there. They want to be able to pick up the kids nice and early. So part of modern project management is the fact that people are going to be working from home. And therefore, immediately, we've got a distributed team. What can we do to help? Tools can help in this area. What we have done is that we've got uh, one, of the, one of the teams that I was working with um, had a coat stand. And on the coat stand, they would hang an iPad. It had a special frame associated with it. And that frame contained the iPad. And when they, when they dialed in, they could see an ind individual's face. So it was like that they were standing next to you. You had, a, you had the individual, admittedly it was a talking head, but it was that individual and they felt part of it. And what they would do is for the visual management board, they would actually lift the iPad and point it to the board so that they could see what was actually going on. That was a, that was a very successful method. And when you've got people who are uh, distance, that is a great way. And that, it doesn't necessarily need to be the full-on um, iPad. It can be modern technology allows you to do these kind of things really easily on your iPhone. So people using the iPhone, uh, they'll maybe on speaker down below. Always look to get that facial um, issues. Always try and get that least come kind of voice involved uh, in, the, in that connection because that's where, as humans, we work best. 
Another way that I've seen it working very well is uh, one of the big companies. Uh, what, what they did is that they connect, had a Wi-Fi room, which and the table was pushed right up against the wall. And what would happen is that you'd go into that uh, that room. And you'd have this table up against the wall and, and you'd have the, the video camera. And then in India, there was another room and that too was connected. And that too had a table pushed to the, to the wall and a camera. And the marvelous thing that it gave you is a continuous table. So when you went in, it was like one table connecting two continents. And the team would do great things. They'd sit down and they'd have, They'd have breakfast, they would have breakfast, uh, the guys would have lunch together. They would have team meetings together, but it felt like one team. It felt that they were connected. I've seen teams that because they've gone for a distributed uh, model, it means that it, 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 they're looking to save some money. What we've asked them to do is that we understand that the economics, that the need for having people who are offshore, so what you can do is to overcome that is that we can do things such as flying people in, flying people from location A to location B and location B to location A. Not just for a day, not just for a, a couple of days, but for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Let them have connections. Let them go for a beer together. Let them have laughs together. Have another tip that I've seen is that have the teams bring in uh, fun stuff. Bring in a pet uh, or a picture of your pet, not your actual Labrador or your rabbit, but bring in a pet, uh, a picture of the pet. Um, picture, bring in pictures of the, of children, bring in pictures of, uh, of, of the, of their homes, of their families and stuff like that. Because the golden rule here is that you're looking to break down barriers. You're looking to find that connectivity because Every project is going to go through some tough times. I promise you, every project will. And you need to be able to lean on each other. There's an English expression. It says, out of sight is out of mind. And unfortunately, I've seen too many teams being out of mind because they're just not within that eight meter range. So always go in summary for the team to sit together, sit together, sit together. When the team can't sit together, Look for ways and means to enable them to at least have close contact, to have that video connection, to have, to be able to see each other. It's so important. As humans, we love seeing each other. And ultimately, at the very, very bottom, there's email connections, which is harsh, it's brutal, it's documentation, and it's so beyond agile that it makes doing agile projects so difficult. So hopefully over the last few minutes, I've tried to give you some of my tips, tricks, and traps, and some of my experience of working with distributed teams. Once again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get that, that goodness, that, that great juice of, of working together, that, uh, that collaboration, that feedback that you can get from each other. Hopefully that, that was, there were some things there that were useful. And I look forward to talking to you again.